Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome everyone to the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. My name is Father Anthony Gramlich, the rector of the National Shrine, your celebrant for today's Mass. Today we're celebrating the optional memorial of good Pope John the 23rd. He's a saint, St. John the 23rd, on this October 11th, who was known for opening the Second Vatican Council, but was also known for his great humor. If, if you ever, if you want to laugh today, this, my homily, I'm going to tell you all kinds of stories. He was a funny pope, really funny pope. And sometimes we need a sense of humor in life. We need to laugh at ourselves. We need to sometimes laugh even at the world and at human nature lest we become angry, we become uh, frustrated, you know, and all these voices come out of us. Laughter is very good to have in our lives. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, Almighty God and to you, and my, to brothers, you, and my sisters, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my, thoughts and, in my words, and in my words, and what, what I have I done, have and done, what, what I have failed, failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in Pope St. John the 23rd have given a living example of Christ the Good Shepherd to shine throughout the whole world, grant us, we pray, that through his intercession we may joyfully pour out an abundance of Christian charity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who am telling you that if you have yourself circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I declare to every man who has himself circumcised that he is bound to observe the entire law. You are separated from Christ, you who are trying to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. 
For through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord your salvation according to your promise. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to me, me, O Lord. Lord. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to me, me, O Lord. Lord. And I will keep your law continually forever and ever. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to me, me, O Lord. Lord. And I will walk at liberty because I seek your precepts. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to to me, me, O Lord. Lord. And I will delight in your commands, which I love. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to me, me, O Lord. Lord. And I will lift up my hands to your commands and meditate on your statutes. Let Let your your mercy mercy come come to me, me, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside your filled with plunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One thing to realize is that saints come in all shapes and sizes, sometimes big sizes. So John the 23rd was a big man. He was was very obese. He had a great sense of humor, and yet he was holy in his own unique way. Sometimes we expect that a person has to be holy according to my way and not according to the way that God is leading them and their personality. So saints come in all shapes and sizes. And that's what we see with St. John the 23rd. He was known as good, good Pope John in his life because he was so good to other people. I'll give you a little example of his humor. Visiting a hospital, he asked a boy what he wanted to be when he grew up. The boy said either a policeman or a pope. I would, be, I would go in for the police if I were you, the pope said. Anyone can become a pope, look at me. So a great sense of humor. Who was this man, Pope John the 23rd? He was born of a farming family in Soto il Monte in northern Italy in 1881. Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli was ordained a priest in 1904. 
After serving in World War I as a stretcher bearer, he was later made national director of the Society for the Propagation of the Faith. He, he revealed in his biography that in World War I, he, he was seeing the vices of soldiers, of like how they were cursing and doing all kinds of things. And it actually, it, you know, it inspired him to really go out and help, you know, help people to attain virtue. In 1925, he became a papal diplomat serving in Bulgaria, Turkey, and in France. And it was his time, especially in Bulgaria and Turkey, that he had encounters with the Orthodox Church. And he saw the, the goodness in many Orthodox people. He also met Muslims at that time, and he saw even goodness in them. And that's why when the Second Vatican Council came, there was this big thrust for ecumenism, because he, he saw the good that were in people of other faiths, of other Christian faiths, such as the Orthodox or non-Christian faith. With the help of Germany's ambassador to Turkey, Roncalli helped save an estimated 24,000 Jewish people during World War II. He had a great heart, he had a great love for people, especially the poor, because he was poor growing up. Named a cardinal and appointed patriarch of Venice in 1953, by Pope Pius XII, he was elected Pope in 1958 at the age of 78. He took the name John after his father and the two patrons of Rome's cathedral, St. John Lateran. He convoked, in 19, he, he convoked the Second Vatican Council from 1962 to 1965. He convoked it in 1959. His most famous encyclicals were Mater et Magistra, in 1961, and Pachem and Terrace, 1963. Good Pope John died of stomach cancer on June 3, 1963. His feast day, October 11th, recalls the day of the first session of the Second Vatican Council in 1962. Declared a blessed in 2000, he was canonized together with Pope John Paul II by Pope Francis on April 27th, 2014. I'd like to read to you an address that he did at the opening of the Second Vatican Council on how he invokes the mercy of God. At the inauguration of the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council, it is evident as always that the truth of the Lord will remain forever. Indeed, as one age gives way to another, we see that uncertain human opinions take over one from another and often errors vanish as soon as they are born, like mist dispersed by the sun. The church has never failed to oppose these errors and has even condemned them often, indeed with the greatest severity. But at the present time, the spouse of Christ is pleased to apply the medicine of mercy rather than take up the weapons of severity. So he had a new approach of offering people the medicine of mercy rather than reproach and severity. Uh, to relate a little bit about the holiness before I go into the humanness of Pope John the 23rd, they said that he prayed about three rosaries every day. Three, as a pope, he saw him praying the rosary as a pope, three rosaries a day attributing to his great holiness. Now, some, uh, some humorous stories. And one way to attain holiness is to die to yourself. Sometimes we take ourselves so seriously, and we're always focused on self, self. But it's, it's good to actually die to yourself, to laugh at yourself, to even laugh at your own weaknesses, and to know that you can only become holy but by the grace of God, but by the mercy of God. That, that to accept our weaknesses, like St. Therese says, but to strive for holiness at the same time, but knowing that we're weak. So these are some great stories of Pope, good Pope St. John the 23rd, and they're very humorous stories. When he once met a little boy named Angelo, he exclaimed, that was my name too. 
and then conspiratorially, but then they made me change it because they made him change it to John the 23rd at the, when he was elected pope. He says, it often happens that I wake up at night and begin to think about the serious problems afflicting the world, and I tell myself, I must talk to the Pope about it. Then the next day when I wake up, I remember that I am the Pope. In reply to a reporter who asked, how many people work in the Vatican? He, reported, he reportedly said, about half of them. When a cardinal complained that a rise in Vatican salaries meant a particular usher earned as much as the cardinal, the Pope remarked, that usher has 10 children. I hope the cardinal doesn't. More often than not, though, Angelo Roncalli was the target of his own humor. He often laughed about his appearance, big ears, large nose, and round figure. One day after a session with a photographer, he told the stately Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, from all eternity, God knew that I was going to be Pope. He had 80 years to work on me. Why did he make me so ugly? Another time he greeted an ascetic looking visitor with a sigh and the comment, we will both have to say a prayer to God, beseeching him to remove half my excess fat to give it to you. When he went to visit a friend at the nearby hospital of the Holy Spirit in the evening, the nun answering the door said, Holy Father, I'm the mother superior of the Holy Spirit. He replied, lucky you, what a job. I'm just the servant of the servants of God. Not long after he was elected Pope, Pope John was walking in the streets of Rome. A woman passed him and said to her friend, my God, he's so fat. Overhearing what she said, he turned around and replied, Madame, I trust you understand that the papal conclave is not exactly a beauty contest. John the 23rd broke the mold in ways too numerous to count. Natural, outgoing, and spontaneous by nature, he loved inviting workmen, Swiss guards, and ordinary people to stop in for a glass of vino that is wine. Severo, Severio Petrillo, who oversaw the residence at Castel Gondolfo, remembers how Pope John disappeared every now and then. He would slip off the grounds without telling anyone and without an escort walking around among the people. He wasn't above a prank either. Many a prelate strolling with John through the Vatican gardens found out the hard way that the Pope had had the irrigation system rigged to shoot jets of water on the unsuspecting. He once wrote, there are three ways to face ruin, women, gambling, and farming. My father chose the most boring one. Finally, a wonderful, humble reflection of Pope John XXIII on human nature. Men are like wine, some turn to vinegar, but the best improve with age. Pope John XXIII struck the same note on Christmas Day, 1959, when he visited Rome's Regina Celli prison. He told inmates that he came as their brother and confided that one of his relatives had served a sentence for poaching. John related, radiated so much goodness and sincerity that there was not a dry eye in the place by the time he finished speaking. On another occasion, though, one person refused to see him. Learning that the man had murdered his wife, John persuaded the guard to let him inside the inmate cell. Then he opened with these words, you know, I've never been married, but if I had married, I might have killed my wife too. As Je Pope John wrote in his journal, I live by the mercy of Jesus, to whom I owe everything and from whom I expect everything. Someone once asked John about the Italian habit of closing offices in the afternoon. Your Holiness, we understand that the Vatican is closed in the afternoon, and people don't work then. Ah, no, said the Pope, the offices are closed in the afternoon. People don't work in the morning. When he was Cardinal and Patriarch of Venice, the future Pope was talking with a wealthy city resident and told him, you and I have one thing in common, money. You have a lot, and I have nothing at all. 
The difference is I don't care about it. When a journalist asked the then patriarch of Venice what he would be if he could live his life all over again, the future pope said, journalist. Then he said with a smile, now let us see if you have the courage to tell me that. If you could do it all over again, you'd be the patriarch. A Vatican official told the pope it would be absolutely impossible to open the Second Vatican Council by 1963. Fine, we'll open it in 1962, he answered, and he did. He had great trust in God, great sense of humor, never took himself seriously, even laughed at himself, even laughed at his own weaknesses. He knew he was overweight. He knew he loved Italian food and he loved wine, but he did strive for holiness as best as he could with his own personality, his own way, his own sense of humor. We can learn from each one of these saints. Not all saints are so austere, say like a Saint Bruno or the Carthusians. Some saints have to work through their weakness. Some saints need a sense of humor. Some saints have to you know, keep it down to earth. But God is still working with them. Oh, I always love this story, that when he was first opening up the Second Vatican Council, and they were working all day in meetings and everything, and he was tired, so he was ready to go to bed. And he prayed, Lord, it's your church, and I'm going to bed. Surrender. Surrendering everything to God, not acting like it all depends on me for my own holiness or the way that council is going to go or a meeting, but total trust and dependence on God, totally dying to ourself and allowing the spirit of Christ to work within us, even with a sense of humor. As it says in Psalm 2, he who sits in the heavens laughs The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Even the Lord has a great sense of humor. And we have a great saint with a great sense of humor, but a great sense of holiness at the same time. Let us present our petitions to the Father, confident in his all-encompassing love. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit direct them in their service to the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected and appointed officials, may God work through their efforts to create a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer for all who are seeking purpose or meaning in their lives, and for those who may be experiencing difficulty at any transitional stage of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered in this holy place, may the Eucharist fill us with perfect grace while increasing our hunger to be in ever more perfect union with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, May they soon find peace and joy in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us. May the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. God of glory, we place these prayers in your hands, trusting that you will grant us what we most need through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present on the feast day of St. John the 23rd may be for our good, since though it's through its offering, you have loosed the offenses of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John the 23rd, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them holy. Do you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the 23rd, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever, forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art, who in, art heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy, be name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, be, will done, be done, on earth, on earth as it, as is, in it heaven. is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we as forgive we those who trespass, trespass against, us. against us. Lead us, lead us not, not into temptation, into temptation but, deliver but deliver us from evil. From evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, to graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
give birth to the world from me by this most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. Never let me depart it from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm not worthy, not worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul soul shall be healed. healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. an act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Entry 1107, paragraph 2 in the Diary of St. Faustina. Neither graces, nor revelations, nor raptures, nor gifts granted to a soul make it perfect, but rather the intimate union of the soul with God. These gifts are merely ornaments of the soul, but constitute neither its essence nor its perfection. My sanctity and perfection consists in the close union of my will with the will of God. God never violates our free will. It is up to us whether we want to receive God's grace or not. It is up to us whether we will cooperate with it or waste it.
Let us pray. May the power of the gifts we have received, Lord God, on this feast day of St. John the 23rd, fill us with its effects, both to sustain our mortal life and to gain us the joy of unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke whom we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking their own souls. Amen. said that he wanted this image in every home and our goal is to make that happen so we've made these extremely affordable they're the cheapest ones price-wise that you'll find on the internet but the nicest in quality and these images and many more can be found on our website divinemercyart.org if you want to go straight you can also get it at shopmercy.org may almighty god bless you in the name of the father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.